<coughs> All right. So let us. Yeah. This is gonna be a longer stream. Now, in order to begin, this is the most important part of this entire experience. You will be asked a series of questions, and you must answer them honestly. <laughs> now, when I say answer them honestly, I don't mean answer them how you would like to answer them. Answer them with the truth, even if that's hard to face. We all want to be good people. We rarely want to admit our faults, grievances, or mistakes. But you must decide what you truly want. Do you want this to work properly? Do you want the truth about yourself, your destiny in this world? Or would you rather live a lie to hide from yourself? Hello, Master Shadow. Hello, Psychotic Sonic. We're doing therapy today. This process is very simple in theory. You just answer a long series of questions. What's difficult is self-analyzing your own psyche to evaluate the truths in your own mind and life so that you can predict your future. You see, as long as you're honest with these questions and answers, you'll be able to see your own future here. This will tell you things you already know, but don't necessarily know that you know. As long as the answers provided to the questions asked are 100% honest and true, this process will simply unlock a part of your mind that you do not have natural access to. This isn't psychic. This isn't a personality test. This is simply nature. This is you. This is your own mind. This is simply nature taking its course. This is the human brain at work unlocking hidden truths within itself. Alright. Take care, Faulty. While attempting to answer many of these questions, you often wonder things like, well, this answer depends on the circumstances. Create your own circumstances in your mind and answer the questions with a simple yes or no as you see fit. You may not understand nor realize it, but your mind will develop the situation required to answer your question the way it needs to be answered. But why is there a therapist in a bloody room? I don't know if I trust this therapist. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> I invite you to grab a drink of water, sit back, relax, and enjoy the experience. We are about to begin with a series of questions and provided that you are a willing participant, we will be unlocking some substantial information today. Here we go. Do you believe that everyone should always be treated fairly? Yes. Do you believe that everyone should always be treated equally? Yeah. Have you ever invented anything? No, not really. Do you believe that you are worthy of someone's time investment? No, not really. Would you consider yourself to be open-minded? I mean, I try to be. <coughs> Would you say that you sometimes have trust issues? Absolutely. Would you be alright with living alone forever? Yeah. Yeah, I think I would be. You always give someone the benefit of doubt. I try to. Yeah. Do you dislike the sound of your own voice? <laughs> no, I'm 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 totally fine with the sound of my own voice. No, of course I am. Do you like the color blue more than the color black? Yeah, I'd say I do. <laughs> I admitted the concept of red hair despite my color blindness. No, I did not. <laughs> if you found money on the street and knew, it uh, knew who it belonged to, would you give it back to them? Yes. Are you sure you want the answers you seek? Well, I'm here, aren't I? Am I afraid of spiders? Absolutely. If you knew you would emerge unscathed, would you jump into molten lava? I would emerge unscathed. Did you see that Donnie was playing this game yesterday? Uh, yeah, I wasn't joining for that one though. Okay, if I knew I would emerge unscathed, would I jump into molten lava? Hmm. Would it hurt? Like, would it still burn? Like, obviously I'd emerge unscathed. But if I jumped into molten lava, would it still burn? Would I just feel the burn, but be able to, like, walk out of it? Just perfectly fine. I 
No. I don't think I will. But do I consider myself to be fat? Yes. I would like to try to, to work out a little bit more, go out and walk a little bit more to, to lose some of this fat, actually, would be nice. Would I say that I have lots of charisma? No. Have I ever wished I could temp be temporarily frozen? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, so yeah, if I- have I ever wished? Yes. This is all very interesting. Did you realize that the last letter of the previous five questions when put together spelled the name Satan? Um, yes. Does that make you feel uncomfortable? No. Am I good at hit finding hidden puzzles, puzzles or clues? Um... I mean, I play a lot of puzzle games. I'm not always the best at finding the clues and stuff, though. I'd say I'm relatively okay. <clears throat> Are you now wondering what other hidden messages are placed within these questions? A little. Have you been entirely honest with your answers thus far? I mean, I think so. Are you afraid of the consequences for answering questions dishonestly? Yes. Are you aware that there could be potential consequences for answering dishonesty? Honestly. Yes, because I watched Nezzy play this. Am I wondering how these questions began to take a strange turn? No. Would you consider yourself captivated? Not really. Oh, wait. Did you just mean in a general sense? Oh, fuck. Yeah, whatever. Very interesting. Would you consider yourself to be brave? No. Do you view yourself as someone with above average intelligence? Nope. Have I been looking for hidden messages in these questions? Not really. Am I wondering which hidden messages you may have missed? Not really. Have I begun to wonder how long this test uh, this test will take or how many questions exist within the session? No, not really. Would you consider yourself to be a patient person? I try to be. But no. <laughs> Do most humans annoy you? I wouldn't say most. You prefer animals to people? No, not really. Do you believe in magic? <sighs> I used to. Uh, I guess there's still a part of me that kind of does. Yeah, I'll say yeah. Do you believe in God or the existence of some form of higher power? No, not really. Do I fear death? No, not really. Am I attracted to someone whom I'm not currently in a relationship with? Did you answer the last question with 100% honesty? Am I alone? Uh, currently, yes. Am I sure? Yes. If I told you with utmost certainty that there is someone, something watching you, would you believe me? Yes. Have I, have you wondered who I am? No. Have you had shivers at any point during the session? No. You used to? Again, I guess there's a part of me that still kinda does believe in magic, but like... That part is... not the biggest part. I don't know. I was a lot more into it, like, as a kid. No, not even as a kid. As a teen, I was more into it. These questions are getting weird. Oh, they're gonna get weirder. Do I feel like I'm being watched? Um... Well, I mean, I'm on a Twitch stream, so yeah. Have I considered quitting the session early? No. We're gonna go through the, all three games this stream. Do you drink water every day? No. Do you eat at least once per day every day? I mean, I try to. So yeah, I'll say yeah. I mean, I think there's only one or two days that I can think of this past year where I didn't. With magic, are we talking about magic tricks or magic in general? Uh, magic in general. Do you realize that there's a high probability that you missed a plethora of hidden messages thus far? Yes. Am I wondering what they are? Not really. Would it bother you to never know without finding them yourself? Um... No. Is your favorite number seven? No. Life is short, but it's the longest thing we'll ever do. Do you agree? Yes. 
Oranges cannot be compared to apples. Do you agree? Why can't fruit be compared? No. Oh. Venus is sometimes referred to as the morning star. Did you know that? No. Well, other than Nezzy stream, but... Everyone deserves a second chance, do you agree? Yes. You can do anything you put your mind to, do you agree? Yes. <clears throat> Obedience is more important than freedom, do you agree? No. Underwater adventures sound like a fun time, do you agree? No. Do you realize that the first letters of the previous eight questions spelled the phrase, I love you? Uh, yes. Do you wish to be loved? Hmm. Sure. Have I ever felt hated? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Do I have any addictions? Yes. Do you dislike the color pink? No, I actually really like the color pink. Does the color gray seem depressing? Oh, yeah. Do you enjoy loud music? Not really. Do you like to dance? No. Would you consider yourself normal? No. Do you love your parents? <sighs> Have I ever been lied to? Do you get angry often? Do you hold grudges? Yeah. Have I ever forgiven someone? Too many times. Have you ever done something that you knew you shouldn't have done, but still did it anyway? Yes. The test speedrun win. God. Have I ever lied? Yeah. I actually was a very big compulsive liar as a kid, uh, until, uh, corporal punishment was introduced into my life. Uh, or reintroduced into my life, I should say. Uh, now I do my best to not lie, but... You know. Oh. Uh-oh. What did I just answer? Oh, fuck. Um. I didn't... I didn't mean to answer that. I didn't know if you right-clicked or left-click. It would just do something. Uh-oh. I don't even know what I just answered there. Do I think flowers are more beautiful than trees? Um... Sometimes. Have you ever wanted to be an animal instead of a person? No. Do you believe you have psychic powers? Not at all. Have I ever seen a ghost? If I've ever cheated on a test? No, then I haven't. I must have ans- Did I answer no? Man, I don't even know what I answered. I think I accidentally right-clicked, and I think that might have been now, but I don't know. Have I ever seen a ghost? Probably not. So I'm gonna say no. Do you dream often? Every day. Well, every night, rather. Do I have nightmares often? Yes. Do you suffer from anxiety attacks? I don't think so. You haven't seen a ghost, but you've experienced paranormal activity before. Little Scribble thought she has seen a ghost a couple of times, but... And that implies that I really believe in ghosts nowadays. And I don't know how I, I, don't know how I feel on, on ghosts, like the belief of ghosts, just generally speaking. Make some pretty good predictions almost in every E3 event that you've streamed. Mm. I suffer from depression? Not that I know of. Do you exercise often and stay active? I want to, but no, I don't. I'd say you're psychic. Is there a particular type of food that you despise? I don't like rice. Would I? Would you consider yourself emotionally wounded? Probably. <laughs> Have I ever felt betrayed? Yes. Lost in life? Yes. Would you consider yourself a natural leader? No. You could push a button and destroy the world. Would you press it? No. Do you sometimes dream of being a hero? I mean, that's how that's how Tobias was made. So yes. Have I ever been bullied? Yes. Have you ever bullied someone else? Yes. Would you? <laughs> you don't like rice? I don't. It's a texture thing. 
Don't worry, it's it's absolutely a texture thing, it just doesn't agree with me. Would you consider yourself to be a dreamer? Yes. Do you sometimes hurt people's feelings unintentionally? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Unintentionally? For sure. Do you find space fascinating? Yes. Would you consider yourself to be an artist? Hmm. No. Would you consider yourself to be a good friend? No. Would you consider yourself to be flawed? Absolutely. Have you ever fantasized about being a supervillain or performing a heinous, egregious crime? Oh yeah, I've done it a couple of times. Do you believe in perfection? Uh, no. Have you ever stolen from someone? Yes. Would you ever kill someone under any circumstances? Self-defense! Yeah, absolutely. If you had one day left to live, would you tell anyone? Yes. Have you ever told your darkest secrets to someone? I think so, unless there are things that I'm hiding from even myself. I'll say, sure. Do you trust me even though you know nothing about me? Yes, you are a fictional character. Do you know who I am? No. I know who you are. If I appeared behind you right now, would you scream? Yes, because you are a fictional character. If I told you that I've been behind you this entire time, would that scare you? No. Of course not. That would be silly now, wouldn't it? Would you consider yourself to be empathetic? Um... Ah. I'll say no. Not because I don't feel empathy, but because I... The way that I'm interpreting this, because I'm supposed to interpret these questions in, in a way. The way that I'm inter interpreting this question is like... Mm, actually, you know what? No, I would. I would. To a degree, I would say I'm empathetic. Sure. Yes. Would you consider yourself to be romantic? Have I ever been in a physical fight? My prona headaches or migraines? You look at the ground when you walk? Um... I used to, when I was a kid. Not really, not anymore. Sometimes, but not... That's not, like, all I do anymore. Am I attracted to the opposite sex? Good question. I miss Squirt. Squirt was fun. Attracted to the opposite sex. That is a good question. Do fictional crushes count? You know what? I'll say yes. Would you ever shave your head? There's the sometimes option. Did I ever shave my head? No. I haven't had a haircut in over a decade. Am I attracted to muscular bodies? My friends would say yeah. No. No, I don't think I am. Do you ever dance when no one is looking? I kind of groove out in my chair, sure. Do you trust your best friend entirely? I don't even know who I would say is my best friend. So no. Do you remember your childhood extremely well? <sighs> this one's a difficult question to answer, uh, because I think I do, and then I continue to gaslight myself, wondering if I do or not. So I'm going to say no, because I don't know for sure. Doodle, Doodle has to be having those long flowing locks then. No, your hair stops growing after some time. So my hair goes down to, like, my lower back. Okay. Would you rob a bank if you could get away with it? If I could get away with it? Hmm. I do need 
need the money. No, I probably wouldn't. Do you ever dream about running from a killer? Yes. Do you ever dream about falling off a cliff? Yes. Do you ever dream about being naked in public? <sighs> if I have, it hasn't been in a very, very long time, so no. Do you enjoy scary movies or books? Oh, not really. Do you enjoy comedic television shows or movies? Yes. Do I have a ponytail? Yeah, right now, my hair is tied back in a ponytail. My hair is typically tied back in a ponytail. Do I like being the center of attention? No. Do you feel like something is always watching you? Um... No. No, not really. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to go to space now? Have you ever had an out-of-body experience? I don't think so. Have you ever punched a nun? Ah. <laughs> uh, have I ever punched a nun now? Do you like dogs better than cats? No, not really. Do you prefer to read more than you prefer to watch movies? Um... No, not really. I'm still wondering why I asked if you ever punched a nut. No. Do you get starstruck easily? Uh, not anymore. I used to. Do you hate going to big parties and social gatherings? Um... Yeah. Is your favorite part of your birthday receiving presents? Um... No, because then I feel like I have to pay them back. Seriously, though, have you ever punched a nun? Like, really? Just BAM! Right in the face, but nun punch. No! Did you laugh? Yeah. Did you say what the fuck in your head or even out loud? Yeah. Are you now eager to somehow get the opportunity to punch a nun sometime soon? <laughs> no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> if there's a hell, do you think you're going to it? Absolutely. Do you enjoy fan uh, fantasy fiction games? Uh, sometimes? Yeah, sure. Do you masturbate frequently? Are you wondering what constitutes frequently? No, not really. Are you more than slightly uncomfortable? Not right now. Um, no, not really. Is your mouth dry? No, not really. Does profanity make you uncomfortable? Fuck no. Do you believe in legendary beasts such as the Loch Ness Monster or Bigfoot? I believe that they might have existed at one point. Are you poor with money management? Yeah, I kinda am. Choose one of these numbers that you feel resonates the most with you this very moment. 1, 7, 11, 13, 21, 69. <laughs> um... I guess 11. Choose one of these colors that you feel resonates with you at this very moment. Blue, green, red, purple, gray, black. <laughs> I can't fucking stand profanity. Shit pisses me the fuck off. Friends with Nezzy the Loch Ness Monster. This is true. I am friends with Nezzy. Um, one of the colors that resonates with me the most in this very moment. Um... I'll go with blue. She's one of these words that feel resonate with you at this very moment. Wicked, sick, play, stretch, and toxic file. She's one of these words that makes you, uh, that you feel resonates with you most at this very moment. <clears throat> Less... Glorious, divine, angelic, heavenly, celestial. This is the least problem of one, I guess. She's one of these words that feel resonate with you most at this very moment. Luck, skill, strength, and intellect, and charm. I guess, intellect? 
Do you enjoy solving mathematical puzzles now? Do you speak more than one language fluently? No. Have you ever visited a country other than your own? Uh, Bahamas, 2005, but I don't think that counts. Maybe? Give me a sec. Yes. Once. And that is, that is the only answer that I can give. <clears throat> Do you enjoy coffee? Uh, no. Not really. Do you believe in demons? Not really. No. Do you believe in angels? No, oh, not really. If if there is if there are angels, then uh, they're certainly not wasting their time with me. Am I afraid of sharks? Mm, a little. You prefer ba prefer baths over showers. Um. Uh, Hmm. Beds for more relaxation. Showers for actually, like, cleaning. Um. Do look like accurate, Tony Hawk? Do I prefer baths or showers? Baths are more relaxing. Showers get you cleaner. Um. I haven't seen... Depends on how big the tub is, this is true. Does the smell of perfume or cologne give you headaches? No, not really. Do you see a shadow move in your room? Uh, a few moments ago. No. That's fortunate. Do you ever hear your name being called when you know no one is calling it? Um, sure. Do things in your home often go missing and then reappear later? Yes. Do you ever hear footsteps around you when you're alone? No. No. I can't even hear footsteps normally. We have carpeted floor. Do you ever hear random knocking noises around you? Yes. Do you often look at the same time on the clock every day? No. Have you ever felt like, uh, felt your feet being grabbed at night while sleeping? Yes. Do you have any pets? Yes. Is your favorite color green? No. Are you attracted to a family member? No. If you won the lottery, would you share the money with anyone? Good question. I probably would share it with my family. I don't think I'd have a choice in that matter, actually. So, yeah. If you could be the dictator of your own country, would you accept the role? No. Do you ever wonder what it would be like to be in prison? I have. Do you like fishing? Uh, no, not really. Do you like hunting? No, not really. Do you like camping? I mean... Other than setting up a tent and stuff like that... I don't mind camping that much. Do you like guns? No, not really. Am I getting tired of answering questions? Nope, we're just beginning. Or you consider yourself to be kinky? No? I'm ace. Eyes are the window to the soul, do you agree? Ah, sure. Do you always keep your promises? No. Do you ever completely trust someone who's lied to you? <sighs> yeah. Am I an only child? No. I have two brothers. Do you ever enjoy being drunk? I wouldn't know. Do you like tattoos? Not really. Do you enjoy being high in any form? Um, I would like to try it, but no. I've never been high. Do you believe you have a soul? 
Yeah. It's one of the silly superstition things I believe in, I guess. Did you cry this week? Yeah. Am I upset with someone right now? Um... Well... No, not currently. Is there someone you're not being completely honest with daily? Um, no. You understand how this works yet? Um... Sorta! Of. You're gonna ask me a bunch of questions, you're gonna give me like a, a, a word, and I'm gonna put it in the replies to Steam, and then, yeah, I, I know how that much works. If you answer the questions twice, your truths may change. This is, uh, it's not about answering the questions, it's about the time you spend answering them and the combination you answer them in. It's about many different variables you'd never guess. Do you understand? Uh, sure. Are you wondering if the end of the test is coming soon, based on the previous question you just answered? No. If I were to tell you that this entire process was planted here for you, specifically you, to learn something about yourself and anyone else that bothers using this, uh, is just a byproduct of its intention, would you believe it? No. Are you afraid of being abandoned? Yes. Or are you afraid of dying alone? No, because that's most likely what's going to happen. Do you worry that one day you'll just- you'll be unexpectedly murdered? Yeah. Are you always on guard waiting to fend off an attack? No. Do you feel like I know you yet? Uh, you are a virtual character. You are not real. No. Have you heard any strange noises while answering these questions? No. I think we have enough information about you. Whether you skipped questions, answered honestly or dishonestly, took loads of time to respond, or answered quickly without reading or understanding properly, I've been able to tell. I'm calculating your results, analyzing you very carefully. I'm judging you. Based on what you told me, this is what I can conclude. Oh dear. You poor, unfortunate soul. You've been hurt before. It's clear that it's affected the way you look at certain situations in life, whether you realize it or not. I'm here to tell you right now that it does not have to be that way. You're a lot stronger than you think you are. You're a lot stronger than you can even imagine. Everything you've been through in life, every way that others have treated you, all the things that have ever happened, they've all led to this moment right here, right now. Even when it seems like things are falling apart, when things tend to go wrong instead of right, you still keep fighting. You're still here, breathing, despite the odds. You're not lucky. You're a survivor. And there's a very big difference. You need to fully understand just how incredibly rare that is in today's world and give yourself some much needed praise. One thing I can assure you of is that as long as you continue to fight, as long as you do not give up, even if things get worse, despite the odds, you can and you will overcome them. They don't make people quite as strong as you very often. You can survive, you can thrive, and you can inspire those who are struggling by showering them, or by showing them, with what happens when you refuse to give in, refuse to surrender, and refuse to settle. I'm so incredibly proud of you, and you should be even more proud of yourself. Your secret word is angel. Remember this word. It'll come in handy. Okay. Can I... Fine, I'll just fucking write it down in a text document and worry about that later. Take the secret word that is assigned to you at the end of your session and leave it in a comment for us. We will be selecting some of your, uh, some of you based on your answers and be included in a future project we're currently working on. Don't be afraid. This is an opportunity for you to be a part of history. This is a chance for you to be a part of something greater. Be sure to note your secret word in your comments. 
If you do not wish to be a part of an upcoming project, simply leave your secret word out of your comments and we will not select your name. We appreciate any and all comments you leave and we will always read them thoroughly. Thank you for taking the time to answer these questions. I know they've been of some help to you, and even if they aren't yet, we will all make it will all make sense very soon. Trust me on that. You can find the test Hypothesis Rising, the test Final Revelation, and the testing chamber on Steam if you've enjoyed this installment. You can also find the Journey series and the Advisor, seri Advisor series, which we encourage everyone to try. If you'd like to support us further to try our other games, you can find a link to our all our titles on the title screen of this game under the selection of our other games. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate you. Just gonna outright fucking spell it for me that I've been hurt, huh? I mean, considering I was friends with people like V and Ray, Ski Hound, Dylan. I mean, considering who all I've been friends with in the past, I'm not exactly surprised that that's, um, that that's was come to. It's like, yeah, I could have told you that one for free. Uh, and considering I'm, like, still, do like, still dealing with stalkers, still dealing with harassment and stuff like that. Yeah. That's just kind of, like, a given. Still, though, it's interesting that the, the test, you know, wound up coming to that conclusion. It's also reminding you of how strong you really are. I mean, I've been told that I am, but I don't really know how true that actually is. Anyway. So that's part one. If you thought we were done, um, don't worry, we're not. Alright, <sighs> test two. screen is a bit, uh, bigger than the last one. Give me a sec. Okay. I mean, you're still here. That's more than enough proof that you're stronger than you think. I mean... Possibly. At least, as far as we know, I'm still here. Before experiencing the test, Hypothesis Rising, it is highly recommended that you play its prequel, The Test, first before venturing into this experience. Just it. You will stand to gain a lot more from this experience if you played the test first, and this examination will also make a bit more sense as it carries on from where the last examination left off. I'd like to urge you to go and play the test now before venturing forward and follow the instructions listed throughout the game, as you will certainly get a bigger benefit all by taking the test in the order that they were meant to be taken in. Would you like to close this game now so you can have the opportunity to play the test first? You will not get a chance to exit the game until the experience is over if you choose to continue now. I've already played the test. Wonderful news. We can continue. What do you mean, as far as we know? So, I mean, as far as we know. I don't know, I could be a spirit. I could be a- I, I could be dead. Anyway. Hello, and welcome to my office. It's truly a pleasure to see you here today. Please excuse the mess, I haven't had a chance to clean up yet. Now, I don't want to take up too much of your time with blibber-blabber and nonsensical speak, so I'll just get straight to the point. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves life test questions. <laughs> it 
There's one question in particular I'd like to ask you yourself. Are you happy? The answer to that is no. Only that's how it works, Susie. I don't know that, and neither do you. <laughs> it's like, you guys haven't seen me. Actually, that's not exactly true. You guys did see me when I was opening, like, the, the doodle cards. God damn it, this, this joke doesn't work anymore. Fuck. You guys had, you guys had to fucking ruin it. Okay. <laughs> God. You guys had to put pressure on this joke. How dare. <laughs> anyway. When I say happy, I don't mean content. Being content is great, but it's not the same as being happy. I want to help you. I want to inspire you to be the best that you can be. I want to inspire you to be the happiest version of yourself. I want to see you grow inside and out. Now, how do we accomplish this, you might be asking? Good question. Allow me to explain. I'm going to ask you a series of questions, and you're going to answer them with 100% hon entire honesty. And when I say 100% entire honesty, I mean 100% entire honesty. Think about it. You, you do want to be happy, don't you? You wouldn't want to be, or er, you wouldn't want to do something so bold as to tempt fate by lying, would you? Just remember. If you lie, the only person you're lying to is yourself. The only person who will suffer from this is you. And believe me, you will suffer. Not to mention the fact that whether you tell the truth or not, I'll know. But that's another story. Let's be moving on, shall we? We've wasted enough time explaining that we're, uh, what we're going to be doing. Just remember, we all want to be good people. We all want to give the answers that we feel lend the most desirable human traits within ourselves. But sometimes good people do bad things. And sometimes we don't always have desirable traits as humans. I cannot express enough just how important it is to truly be honest while answering these questions, no matter how uncomfortable the truth may make you. <laughs> Not gonna lie, fate is kinda hot. Okay, Faulty. <laughs> now, it's time to get into the real meat of this experience. It's time for you to get the advice that you deserve. As you read questions and scenarios during this process, I want you to create your own circumstance and build your own bridges to arrive at the answer that best suits your own psyche. If you've never experienced the scenario being asked of you, then simply imagine uh, that you have and try to assume how you might feel in that situation. I'd like to invite you to pour a glass of water, sit back, and relax as we unfold your fate and secret to overcoming the next hurdle in your life. Man, both of these guys have told me to, uh, to have water, and I've, I've just been drinking Pepsi, or Diet Pepsi, this entire time. I'm fucking caffeinated out of my ass. <laughs> He's totally got a six pack under those robes, probably. We're gonna start with some basic easy questions. Spoopy. If you answer these questions twice, your advice may change. It's not about answering the questions, it's about many different variables. Many different factors are at play here, including the amount of time taken to answer proposed questions. With that being said, it's far more important to actually take your time and think about how honest of an answer you're giving before you give it. Whatever you do, do not rush the process. Time is your best friend here. You'll see what I mean soon enough. And here we go. Do you feel uncomfortable right now? No, not really. Are you nervous? No, not really. Do you feel cold? No, it's actually pretty hot. Do you feel sad? Uh, not exactly. Not right now, at least. Have you ever hurt someone because you were hurting, even though they didn't deserve it? Yes. Do you crave acceptance by others? Well, yeah. Have you ever lost a loved one? Um, yeah. Do you know what heartbreak feels like? No. Do you believe in demons? Not entirely, no. 
Hmm. Do you believe in curses? Yeah. Would you consider yourself to be spiritual? Not really. Are you afraid of dying alone? No, it's probably gonna be what happens. If there was undeniable proof that a ghost was haunting you, would you continue to live in your home? I mean, I wouldn't have the ability to move. So, yeah. Have you ever seen an object mysteriously move without being touched? Ah, uh, no, not really. Do you believe it is possible for a game to summon supernatural forces into your life without you knowing it? Uh, no. Would you like to make more friends? I mean, i try to, so yeah. Would you consider yourself to be a good friend? Unfortunately, no. Do you feel lonely? Hmm. What the fuck was that? Do you make friends easily? Uh... Yeah, I've been told that I do. Do you tend to avoid drama where possible? Uh, yeah, drama's pretty exhausting. Have you ever had a near-death experience? Not to my recollection. Do you like horror movies? No, not really. This is all very interesting. Have you played the test? Yes. That's the spirit. Have you played the horoscope? No. Give it a whack. Not to I'm totally not biased or anything. Oh, are you are you a part of the horoscope? Do you watch porn? No. Would you consider yourself to be a hard worker? Yes. Do you have a low opinion of yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Big bull Texas that talked to me. Fair enough. Would you consider yourself to be a confident person? No, not really. Would you help an old lady cross the street even if you were running late for an appointment? I try to be punctual. So probably not. Would you kill all of your neighbor's pets just to save one of your own? No. Have you ever tried to smother yourself with a pillow to see if you could actually suffocate yourself? Yes. Have you ever been caught dancing when you thought no one was watching? Have you ever tried to roll your eyes so far back just to see if they'd really get stuck? Have you ever played a practical joke that you regret pulling on someone? That's a story for another day, though. Are you streaming live right now? Yeah! Well, hello there, audience. Are you recording this gameplay session right now? Uh, well, the VOD will be recorded, yeah. If I told you that I was watching you play this game right now, would you believe me? No. If you left a comment... F uh, if you've left a comment for me at any point in time, I've read your words. Does this bother you? No. If you left a comment for me, does that make you feel positive that I've paid attention to what you've taken the time to write? Sure. Do you understand that no matter what, I appreciate you? Sh sure. I really do. Are you afraid of snakes? No. Well, no, not really. Do you believe in magic? We went over this. Oh, I cried in the last month, yeah. Do you have a hero? No, not really. Do you typically learn from your mistakes? I think I do. Do you enjoy outdoor activities? Um... Not all the time. Would you consider yourself to be lazy? Yes. Fate, why won't you respond to chat? Do you hate us? <laughs> do you sometimes find it difficult to stay motivated? Yeah. Do you put the needs of others before yourself? Yeah. Would your family and friends describe you as kind? Fuck if I know. Um... I don't know. Pro 
Probably? I've ever cheated in a relationship. I've never been in a relationship. Have you ever cheated? Have you been ever cheated on in a relationship? I've never been in a relationship. Would you consider yourself to be judgmental? Yeah, sometimes. I see. Are you a hero to someone else? I don't fucking know. I've been told that I'm an inspiration to people, but I don't know if that's the same as being a hero. I'd probably say no. Do you love animals? Contrary to the popular belief, yeah. Have you ever found a family member on Tinder and wanted to hit them with a super like just to make shit real awkward? No. Can't say I ever have. Yeah, uh, me neither. Do you enjoy drinking alcohol? I've never drank alcohol. Are you intoxicated right now? No. Well, that makes one of us. <laughs> Do you like the phrase, sneaky snake? Um... Yeah, I guess it works. Are these questions a bit strange to you? Not really. Do you have a vivid imagination? I don't think so. Do you feel uncomfortable in a large social setting? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Would you consider yourself to be antisocial? No, not at all. Do you hold a grudge for long periods of time? Uh, I can. Have you ever urinated in public? Uh, I actually have a shy bladder, so no. Do you like pineapple on your pizza? Yeah, I'm okay with pineapple on pizza. I knew I liked you. But you consider yourself to be selfish. Uh, yeah. Do you think you got a big ego? I mean... I don't think so. Would you consider yourself kinky? No. Would you consider yourself to be religious? No. Would you consider yourself to be temperamental? Give me a sec to figure out what that what that would entail. Uh, liable to unreasonable changes in mood relating to a person's temperament. Yeah, I'd be very I'm very temperamental, sure. If you had to kill someone to save your own life, but you knew they didn't deserve it, would you do it? Um Interesting. Would you sacrifice your own life for a complete stranger? Probably not. Even more interesting. Have you ever been inside of a burning building? No, and I hope I never have to. Have you ever been to a funeral? Yeah. What do you mean you don't consider yourself religious? You worship a giant fucking duck. <laughs> the only duck is is a meme for this for this channel. If you could attend your own funeral before you died, would you like the opportunity to do so? Oh, not really. If you could see into the future, but you were told that it would only reveal the absolute worst of what's in store for you, would you still look? Probably not. If you had the power to stop time, would you use it to do something you know you shouldn't do? No. If you had the power to remove one person from Earth, never to return again, would you use it? <sighs> I have a list. But I probably would not actually use it. I have a list of people who I know I would want to do that to, but I would probably never use it, so no. Well, actually, no, I do think I would use it. At least once or twice. If I told you that I understand you better than you understand yourself, would you believe me? Um, no, not really. If someone threatened to kill you, would your first response be to react in violence? Threaten to kill me? No. Actually come to try to kill me? Yes. So, no. I've had no, enough people, I've had enough, like, death threats in the past, and... I, they don't really bother me that much anymore. 
If a stranger stole money from you to support their drug addiction, would you forgive them if they apologized for you? Or apologized for you? Or to you? Uh, sure. If a family member said something nasty about you behind your back, would you confront them about it directly? No, because they... they put it this way, I know they already do. I can hear them. Like, these walls are very thin in this house, so I know they do. And I don't really confront them about it, so no. If you had to eat raw squirrel brains for three days to stay alive, would you do it? Well, my grandmother likes squirrel brains, so... Sure. I don't know about raw squirrel brains, but... If you woke up tomorrow and none of your family remembered who you were, would you choose to leave and start a new life? I don't think I'd have the ability to. So no. If a homeless man was clearly sick, freezing, and utterly miserable in the rain, would you be willing to give him your clothes and walk home naked? No, because it's public indecency. Squirrel brain? Yeah. I mean, my grandmother likes them. I've never tried it, but... Y'all gotta remember, I grew up in kind of a hick family. <laughs> My family comes from Arkansas, so... Squirrel brains. Anyway. If someone accidentally hit you in their car, but you suffered no injuries whatsoever, would you still be upset with them? No, not really. Hey, if... No harm, no foul. Like fried? I don't know. Ne try it next time you visit Grandma? No. She hasn't had it in a while, I don't think. To my knowledge. But she's seen, she's told me that she's had it before and that she likes it, so... Okay. Talking fried, right? I don't know! Would you like to pet a squirrel? Yeah, I would. If I could get away with petting a squirrel, I totally would. Have you looked for any hitting meanings or messages within these questions? No. Maybe you should have been. Are you wondering if there's a deeper meaning to all of this other than just simply answering question after question? No, not really. Miracles happen every day. Do you agree? No. They aren't worth lugging around and you don't mind getting rained on. Do you agree? Yeah. I don't mind getting rained on. Red is a prettier color than pink. Do you agree? No. Do you ever feel like a plastic flag blowing through the wind? Yes. Being in front of people can be awkward. Do you agree? Rings used to ceremonial wedding gifts are outdated. Do you agree? Yes. Did you realize that the first letter of the last six questions when combined spells the word murder? Uh, I've heard this before, yes. Do you know why that is? No. Does that make you slightly uncomfortable? No. Are you going to start paying closer attention to what maybe you've gotten yourself into? No. Do you realize it's too late to turn back now? Yeah. Do you hear someone in your room? No. Well, other than me. I don't count, though. Do you see the shadow closing in? No. Do you feel like you're being watched? I mean, there's a live stream. You asked me earlier if there was a live stream, so yeah. Do you look around your moment room a moment ago? No. Do you like long walks on the beach? No. I hate sand. It's coarse, it's rough, and it gets everywhere. Do you enjoy giving gifts to people? Yeah, but I don't always have the ability to do so. Have you ever felt like giving up on life? Ah, there they are. Yes. Do you love your family more than you love yourself? No. Do you have a best friend who's clearly better than the rest of your friends? No. Do you think there's some kind of conspiracy behind the coronavirus? Oh, this is new. Um, no. Do you believe that you're human? Smart, I know. You could turn invisible, but you could never be visible ever again once you decided to use your power for the first time. Would you ever use it? No. If you knew someone was about to rob a convenience store, but you knew that they were doing it to feed their family, would you stop them? Psst. 
I would tell them don't, but I wouldn't stop them, no. If you were stranded on a remote island with a stranger, and you were both starving to death, but you found a secret stash of food that they didn't know about, would you share with them? Yes. If you could turn into an eagle for one year, but you couldn't be able to turn back into a person until that one year had passed, would you do it? No. I'm afraid of heights. You have the opportunity to earn riches beyond your wildest dreams by fighting a grizzly bear to the death using nothing but a machete and an army helmet. Would you do it? Um... To the death? No. Because I would be the one to die. If you had to pick one basic food I don't know exclusively eat for an entire year, would you choose potatoes? No. I'd get tired of potatoes very quickly if that happened. Pizza screamed in agony every time you bit into a piece. Would you still continue to eat pizza? No. If your best friend got bitten in the genitals by a highly venomous snake and the only way to save their life was to suck venom out of their genitals, would you do it to save them? Was that question difficult to answer? Not really. Do you feel moral? Yes. Do you enjoy loud music? No, not really. Do you feel awkward when you dance in front of others? Yes. Do you suffer from an anxiety disorder? Not to my knowledge. Do you ever feel depressed? Yes. You're not alone. Do you feel relaxed? Never. Do you think you have a guardian angel watching over you? I don't think so, no. <laughs> Do you ever hear your name being called when no one could have called it? Yes. I'm going to take special note of that one. Do you always look both ways before crossing the road? Yes. Do you wash your hands every day? Yes. Do you feel uncomfortable using public restrooms? Uh, yes. Very. Is winter your favorite season? No. Do you know anyone named Josh? Uh, yes. I know a few people named Josh, actually. Are you wondering why that last question is relevant? No. Are you allergic to any animals? Not to my knowledge. Have you ever thought about an animal in a sexual way? No. Contrary to the popular belief, I'm not actually a furry. Have you ever been in love? Uh, yes. Would you consider yourself to be artistic? No, not really. Would you consider yourself to be dominant in day-to-day -day life? It depends on what you mean. Because I'm not really sexually active. So, in that sense, no. But, like, well, conversationally, no. Well, I guess just no. I guess. You could find furries to be attractive in a romantic way. God. Do you feel like you got too much time on your hands? No, I don't feel like I have enough time. Can you be easily intimidated by others? Um... Actually, I'd say no. Are you easily excitable? Uh, I don't think so. Do you enjoy solving complex problems? I mean, I play enough puzzle games. Do you have a difficult time relaxing? Yes. Do you consider yourself to be high maintenance? Yeah. Well. Hmm. That's not what I wanted to pull up. I wanted to... I wanted to pull up this. Require a lot of time, money, and effort. Yeah. Do you trust easily? No. Would you consider yourself to be an honest person? I mean, I... yeah. Have you ever told a lie? 
I, as I said, I was a compulsive liar as a kid. Have you ever lied to your best friend? I don't even know who I would consider to be my best friend. At least at this point. So no. Have you ever lied to your family? Absolutely. Have you ever lied about any answers during the session? No. Are you wondering why all these questions have to do with lying? Uh, no, not really. It's all very useful information. Are you a people pleaser? Uh... Yeah, I guess. Do you enjoy being the center of attention? No. Do you feel like you got a good sense of humor? <sighs> yeah, I guess. I can sense when something is funny, I guess. Do you frighten easily? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was odd. I wonder what that was about. Fuck you. <laughs> That's probably a good place for us to stop the simple segment, our questionnaire, and move on to the more gritty questions. This next set of questions will not be yes or no answers. The next portion of our session will be filled with various scenarios that put you smack dab in the middle of final choice making. We'll see how well you handle your options as you delve deep into each scenario. Remember, the key to all this is to answer honestly. Let's get started. You're home alone. It's dark and it's stormy outside. All of a sudden, there's a knock on your bedroom door. Someone's in your house. What do you do? Uh... Yeah, grab the closest item that can be used as an answer. That's my bed. Very interesting choice. You meet a homeless woman in the street. She asks you for money. You find it within yourself to give her all the spare change you have. Just as you do, a homeless man approaches asking if you can spare some change. What do you do? I tell the man that I have no change left to offer. Really now? Both your mother and your father fall incredibly ill to a life-threatening disease, and there's only enough medicine and facilities to save one of your parents. Time is of essence. What do you do? Um... I guess... Mother, I guess. It's kind of an easy question, really. It's either that or keep it for myself. That doesn't surprise me. You find a case of money tucked away inside of a dumpster. Inside there's tin, solid gold bars, and a vial of mysterious liquid under the vial. There's a note that says the cure for cancer. What do you do? Turn the case into a professional entity so that it can be and utilize it. What a wasted opportunity. I'm sorry, I know I shouldn't judge. See, if I cared about my father, I'd split it. Yeah, that's kind of the same with me, too. You're stuck alone inside your house. And you're starving to death. You've completely run out of food, and no one is coming to save you for weeks. The only potential food, f uh, food around you is your family pets. What do you do? Um... Continue to starve along with my pets, I guess? But why am I not surprised? Your neighbor home is on fire, a blazing inferno among smoke emits from the windows. You hear screams for help coming from within, but you can't see past the flames. No one else around is in sight. What do you do? Call the fire department to keep your distance from the home? I like that. You're fast asleep in your bed when you're awakened by what sounds like a woman's muffled cries from somewhere in your room. You quickly realize it's coming from under your bed. What do you do? I don't just cover and wait patiently. Hmm. A man in a fancy suit approaches you while you're walking down the street. 
pulls a watch from his pocket and hands it to you. He claims that when the watch stops ticking, it marks the moment your time out, run out on this earth. What do you do? Um. <laughs> I do like the last answer. Tell him you gotta get three of them as a toy in your happy meal. Um. No, I decline the offer for the watch and keep walking. Would you know? You're sitting at home playing a game on your PC when all of a sudden someone grips and squeezes your shoulder firmly from behind. What do you do? <laughs> Spin around with a vicious elbow to who's ever behind me. <laughs> You're sitting in the bathtub trying to relax when a hand emerges from the water. What do you do? Ah. Uh... Jump out of the bath and run as fast as you can. Clever. You get out of bed and immediately fall down into a deep, dark hole. A man is standing above you, looking down, telling you to put lotion on your skin while he watches. What do you do? Um... Start slathering yourself in lotion, I guess. I mean, you can... If, if shit like that happens, you start slathering yourself in lotion smart choice. You're sitting at home alone, and all of a sudden, your door slams shut. You see it before your very eyes, and you know that no one is home. And it could have been a gust of wind. Couldn't have been a gust of wind. What do you do? Uh, look for a weapon around the room immediately. I like that. Someone you've known for many years, but have no attraction to, tells you that they've had a massive crush on you for a long time. What do you do? Um, well, considering I have actually been in this instance, or have been in this situation, um, tell them that you're flattered, but you're just not interested. Ah, so you're one of those types. Your dog starts randomly barking into the darkest corner of your living room. There doesn't appear to be anything but a dog that insists on escalating the growls. What do you do? Stand and stare at the corner to see if anything moves. I'm taking note of that. You see a massive spider in your room the size of your hand. What do you do? Uh, fucking panic. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> I guess we're moving out now, basically. Ha. <laughs> Your closest family member tells you that they're a serial killer. What do you do? Tell them I don't want to know any more details. I see. If you found out that you only had one day left to live, what do you do? Um... Tell everyone that I love them, and to be happy, not sad. Alright then. If one of your pets started speaking to you and told you that they had a dire warning, that they were going to die if you didn't tell them, and all the ice cream in the freezer, what would you do? <laughs> Go lay down, I'm obviously too high for this. Oh, lovely. If all of a sudden you could start hearing other people's thoughts and the person next to you was thinking about mugging you and stealing your money, what would you do? <laughs> Um... Ignore it, you don't know that you're just... I'd probably do one of these two. Um... Probably... This one more so. That sounds reasonable. Your best friend comes to you and tells you that they accidentally killed someone that they don't want to go to prison. What do you do? <sighs> Try to convince them to turn themselves in. <sniffs> Aww. You're driving in your car and you accidentally run someone over. You're pretty sure that they're okay, but the fact that their head is clearly detached from their body suggests that it's probably just wishful thinking. What do you do? Um. Turn myself into the authorities, I guess. Interesting how that played out. 
I think it's time to move to the next portion of our test. The following questions that shall be asked of you are would you rather style questions? Imagine you've got a gun to your hand and you absolutely must choose an answer, no matter how uncomfortable the name may be. Let's get started, shall we? Would you rather be loved by all or be feared by all? Uh, yes, loved. Would you rather never get angry or never get jealous? Never get jealous. There's no reason to ever... Like, angry... Angry, or like, anger is a poison. Um, but like, there's a reason to get angry. It shows that, you know, there are boundaries to have been... But like, there... It shows that there are boundaries that have been crossed. It tells a person, like, hey, yeah, don't fucking do that. Jealousy, there's no reason for. Would you rather be held in high regard by your parents or by your friends? By my friends. Would you rather live in space or live under the sea? Um, well, neither, but if I had to choose one, um... Space. Would you rather donate your body to science or donate your organs to people who need them? Um, I actually think I'm an organ donor. If I'm not mistaken, I have to double check on that, but, uh, yeah. Would you rather go to jail for five years for something you didn't do or get away with something horrible that you did but always live in fear of being caught? Um, prison for five years. Would you rather work at a horrible job that you hate but retire comfortable in ten years from now? Or would you rather have your dream job but have to work until the day you die? Dream job. Would you rather every shirt that you ever wear be somewhat itchy, or only be able to use one ply toilet paper? Um, I've used one ply toilet paper before. It's pretty bad, but... It'd be better than the itchy shirt. Would you rather have skin that changes colors depending on your mood, or have tattoos appear on your body that depict what you did yesterday? Um... Color changing skin, I guess? Be a bit weird, but you know what? I could probably do something with that. I could probably make that into like a uh, like a neat little party trick. Would you rather shit every time you orgasm or orgasm every time you see a dog? Take orgasm shits for five thousand, Alex. If your partner switched bodies with one of your parents and the only way to get them to switch back was to have sex with one of them, would you rather have sex with your partner in your parents' body or have sex with your parent in your partner's body? What the fuck is wrong with you? No, seriously, what the fuck is wrong with you? Um... Just answer the question. Um... Partner's body, sure. Oh no, no bearing on your results, I was just curious. I think we've answered enough of these types of questions, I'm sure you'd agree. We're going to end this test with a short series of final questions giving simple answers. We'll get started there. Out of the following options, which number do you like the most? Three! Oh yeah, there you go. Out of the following options, which color resonates with you at this exact moment? Um, blue. Out of the following options, which creature are you the least comfortable around? Least comfortable around spiders. Out of the following options, which flavor is your favorite? Um, oh, I like mint. Out of the following options, which do you personally value the most? Um, friends or freedom? Eh, friends. Out of the following options, most live without. I want to put out there that I don't hate my family. I want to put that out there. I don't hate them, but like... Out of the following options, which statement is the most accurate? Um... Caring, I, mean, I guess. You can't live without money, exactly. Out of the following options, which are you most afraid of? Living forever, losing my loved ones, dying alone, or dying immediately after this test is finished? Um... 
living forever because I'm uh, like I'm going to die at some point. We're almost finished, but I just got one final question for you. Have you ever punched a nut? You really ought to try it sometime. And take the edge off. All right, we're done here. I'm through with you. I'm going to calculate your results very carefully. I don't want to miss anything important. Trying my absolute hardest not to judge you right now. I'm trying to keep this as professional as possible. Aha, here we go. Based on what you told me, I've come to a conclusion. This is what I personally believe would be in your best interest to acknowledge, set in motion, and accomplish in order to climb the ladder to happiness in your life. First and foremost, I'd like to start with a blanket statement that everyone truly needs to hear. Something that is taken for granted far more than anything else in life. Something that has such an incredibly unique, irreplaceable value compared to any other thing on this earth. And that, my friends, is the value of time. Time is the most valuable form of currency that you will ever hold in life. You can spend time on anyone doing anything for any reason. Now time can be spent, time can be wasted, time can be taken away. But time can never be refunded, time can never be earned back, and more time can never be gained. Imagine a bank account with all the money that you'll ever get to spend in life. Now imagine not knowing how much money is in your account. Imagine going to the store one day to purchase something you really need and the cashier tells you, I'm sorry, but you cannot afford that. As a matter of fact, you can never afford anything ever again. We only have so much time and we have no idea how, just how much or how little of what we truly have before our bank account runs dry. And the fact that we get to decide and choose what we spend our time on just shows you how truly special it is when someone spends their time on you. So now that we understand the incredible value of time, I'd like to make a suggestion for you personally on how I think you'd be best spending your life, or your time, in order to achieve what you need in this, at most, at this current stage in your life. Let's see here. <sighs> okay, where do I even start with you? Your priorities are all out of whack, and we need to fix this. Quick. The problem is you're spending way too much of your time on people who don't deserve it, and way too little time with the people who do. I want you to think long and hard about who you spend the majority of your day on and think about everyone else in your life. I want you to think about losing each and every one of those people and think long and hard about how losing each one would make you feel. Some of them are going to hurt a lot more than others because some of those people mean a lot more to you than others. But you're not allocating your time based on how much certain people mean to you now, are you? You just realized, at the moment of time and energy you put into some people and how little you put into others would make you feel an incredible amount of guilt if you started losing people that meant the most to you. Hey, thank you for the raid, Mr. Logout. Uh, welcome, chat, uh, to The Test, also known as Video Game Therapy. Um, we're just closing in on the- we're just closing out the, uh, the second game, and then we'll move into the third game. Uh, stick around. Uh, also, hello, I am not DeviantArt. Welcome to the chat, I hope you enjoy your stay. Anyway. My advice to you is to start spending more time with people you truly care about, and most importantly, spend your time with people who truly care the most about you. If you can master this little trait and take extra time to set in motion, you're going to see an extremely new world open up before your very eyes. And you'll be very surprised at just how much of a positive impact this can have on your life going forward. I hope this information helps you achieve your goals. Your secret word is deserving. Remember this word, and it'll come in handy. Okay. <clears throat> Take the secret word that was assigned to you at the end of your session and leave it in a comment for us. We will be selecting some of you based on your answers to be included in the future project we're currently working on. If you do not wish to be a part of the upcoming projects and we leave your secret word out of your comments, we will not select your name. Appreciate any not comments that leave and read them thoroughly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One more thing. We greatly appreciate your feedback and support. We've read every single review and comment left for us. We love the conspiracy theories behind the greater meaning of all this. And the third and final installment of the test series will finally be revealed. But not a single person has been able to figure out what this entire experiment is all about yet. We look forward to reading your thoughts and feelings. It helps shape what we do as we work for future projects to bring the most emotion out of you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for everything you do. Thank you for playing. And thank you for contributing your secret words to our projects. If you wish to support us further, we would love it if you check out our other titles of the 
uh, on the Our Other Games section of the title screen. After playing the test Final Revelation, the third game in the test trilogy, we also have the testing chamber, which is connected to the test trilogy in a very special and unique way. In the meantime, The Advisor is another interesting experience that we'd recommend. It has a great emphasis on player-developer interaction, where you, the player, gets to vote on how the story will be written in future episodes. Your opinions and future decisions have a direct impact on the development process and storyline of The Advisor series, and we'd love to read your ideas, thoughts, and contributions. Again, thank you so much for supporting us in our journey. We cannot show, grati- or cannot show our gratitude and appreciation enough for you, or for all you do to us. We appreciate the rest of your day. It's filled with, re- uh, with all the joy and happiness that you deserve. Okay. So, we've done the test one, and then the test hypothesis rising. We've got one more to do, and then we'll close out the stream. I'll have to get the testing chamber later. We've played what the fuck is wrong with you already. The art of the dad joke is going to be also probably an interesting one I might want to check out. Would you like to see them now? This is quite long. Um... Sure. This is quite a long list, Jesus. Okay. Oh, jeez, there's more? Oh, jeez. Oh my god, there's still more? Christ. I shouldn't have done this. I should have just said no. Can I, can I exit out of this? Is it possible? Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, this is the special thanks. I'm just gonna go ahead and close. We're done. We got the special word. Alright, let's open up the, the third one. The final revelation. seems to be the right size, so... Alright. <clears throat> Before experiencing the test final revelation, it is highly recommended that you play the prequels, the test, and the test hypothesis rising first before venturing into this experience. You will soon gain a lot more from this experience if you played the first two titles, and this examination will also make a bit more sense as it carries on from where the last examination left off. I would like to urge you to go and play the test followed by the test hypothesis rising now before venturing forward, and follow the instructions listed throughout the games as you will certainly get a bigger benefit overall by taking the tests in the order that they were meant to be taken in. This one's a bit louder. I should probably turn this one a bit more down. Alright. I've already played the test in the test, too. Well then, let's continue. Please make sure that you answer each question with the utmost honesty that you take your time to answer the questions presented. Even answering one question improperly may, distra- may drastically change your outcome. You cannot go back and answer questions you misanswered, so be sure to take your time. This is of the, the utmost importance. Okay. When the sun comes crashing down, and the heroes fade away, when darkness is all around, and there is no light of day, I will come back for you so that you may never feel alone. My spirit will push through, your heart will forever be my home. And when the world spirals into the, uh, into abyss, I will be standing there. Your embrace so long I've missed, my soul, my love, I bear. And when every nerve has been left deadened, and every ghost has left its shell, I will bring you back into your heaven as you've rescued me from my hell. No matter what happens, 
I will always love you. You promise? With every ounce of my heart and each drop of my soul, I swear to you. We're going to find a way out of here. We'll have to play the testing chamber to see what this is all about, I imagine. I said, I have a better, it's chasing demons, but we'll get to that point when we, when, when that game actually comes out. <clears throat> Alright. Hmm. I wasn't expecting you so soon. Though I knew that one day we would meet in this room. You see, closely I've been watching you. Studying every breath and every move. A few of my former colleagues you may have met, and a slew of questions you've answered without regret. I may be similar, but unlike them still, I make you swallow the truth like a bitter pill. I peel the emotion from your soul, make you eat your feelings whole. The questions I ask may be hard to answer, but I'll cut the truth from you like a cancer. Both of us know why you're here. To open up and cast out fear. To be as honest as you can. To take angel's wing or devil's hand. And in the end, we both will know how to escape your undertow. Time is on your side, but mistakes are not. Misanswered questions lead to misery wrought. Take time to think before you decide. Get deep for the answers that live inside. You may not go back, you may not return. Once a decision is made, to your soul, tis burned. But before we continue, just know this. Your dishonesty would be very remiss. If your answers lack the guidance of truth, then your final destination would be rather uncouth. Destiny going, talk to Seuss on Susie. Sure, sure. So with that said, I need your heart's honesty. You can run from yourself, but you can't run. Let the examination begin. Do you ever feel like you just aren't good enough? Yes. Do you ever feel like you put more effort into friends or relationships than others put back into you? Yeah. Do you ever feel like your life is going nowhere? I feel that way now. Do you ever feel like you're trapped in limbo? Yes. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by seemingly trivial tasks? Yes. Are you sometimes afraid of what your future may hold? Yes. Do you believe that your friends always treat you the way you deserve to be treated? No. Are you afraid of being the last person alive in your social circle? <sighs> no. Not really. My social circle is full of people who are, like, a couple years younger than I am. And I'm probably not even going to last until I'm 50, to be honest. Are you afraid of the existence of an afterlife and what might what that might mean for you? No. You feel as though you're wanted in life. Do you ever feel like you just don't belong? Do you ever feel like a burden? Have you ever felt left out? Have you ever felt like a failure? <sighs> Have you ever felt like you just weren't attractive enough? Have you ever worked yourself sick? Do you ever have racing thoughts at night that make it difficult for you to get to sleep? Are you afraid to ask for help? Do you feel like people often criticize you? I, I, I mean, I don't have to feel that way. I know I get criticized a lot. Do you ever feel judged by your friends or family? I know I do. Do you ever wonder what your purpose is in life? If you could turn back time for any reason, would you? Would you say that you have many regrets in life? I live a fucking life of regret. This guy is nowhere near as attractive as me. God damn it, Faulty. Does meeting new people for the first time make you uncomfortable? Um, no, not really. Does looking out your window at night make you feel uneasy? A little bit, yeah, actually. You sometimes double check that your doors are locked, even though you're certain that you've already locked them. Yes. Do you ever feel like life is moving too slow? Do you ever feel like life is moving too fast? Yes. Do you feel uncomfortable when you're home alone? No, I actually prefer being home alone. I uh, haven't felt that in, like, years, though. I feel like I can get things done when I'm home alone. 
you consider yourself to be a thoughtful person? No. Would you consider yourself to be superficial? A little bit. Do you ever judge others by the way they look or dress? No. Would you consider yourself to be high maintenance? We went over this, yeah. Have you ever been bullied by someone you cared about? Yes. Have you ever been a bully to someone you care about? You try to keep a low profile to avoid attention from others while in a crowded area. You actively try to avoid busy places. Would you sometimes rather be alone than surrounded by people you care about? Eh, sometimes. Does making phone calls make you feel uncomfortable? Yeah, oh, very much so. Are you sometimes afraid to confront people even when they do something that bothers you? Yeah, I guess. Do you feel uncomfortable when committing it to definitive plans for the future? No. Do you ever feel like no matter how hard you try, you can't just seem to stay motivated? Yeah. Do you ever feel like you're failing those who care about you most? Well, absolutely. Does driving a vehicle give you anxiety? Uh, yes. I don't have a license for that reason. Are you afraid of exploring new places by yourself? Yeah. Have you ever carried an object around with you that made you feel more comfortable? Mm. No. I told you that I could guess your name correctly by right now, would you believe me? Uh, no. Hmm. Well, based on the answers you provided for me so far, if we were- if I were to take a guess... I'd say your name starts with the letter M, doesn't it? No. That makes sense. Let's be real here, there's literally no way I'd be able to guess your name just by your answers. That would be ridiculous. Besides, all of you humans look alike to me anyhow. Being around animals, uh, bring you a sense of peace. Um, no, not really. Do you sometimes believe your loved ones are, tr are lying to you when they say that they care? Do you ever feel like you push your loved ones away? Hmm. I'm gonna have to stop you here. The truth that pours forth is incredibly clear. I hope that you're being honest for your own health. You can try to lie, but you'll be cheating yourself. I'd like to move on to the next phase of the test. A series of pictures to give your brain a rest. Ah, Rorschach test. You're going to tell me what emotional response they bring out, which will show me what your mind is pondering about. So feast your eyes upon the art, and let me into that precious heart. For starters, what emotion do you feel represents this picture? Um, I definitely wouldn't say chaos, because this is actually very orderly. Um, I would give it to anger, actually. What word do you describe feels this picture the best? Um, manic. You think this picture is called, um... Mind of Misery. Very interesting. Moving on. What emotion do you feel is represented in this picture? This is more chaos. Um, but I would actually give this to... Depression. What do you feel describes this picture best? This. Do you think th what do you think this picture is called? darkness within. I see. Yeah, this one. What emotion do you feel most represented in this picture? Um. Numbness? No. Relaxation, I guess. I could see this being used in, like, some, like, lo-fi shit. 
I think this feels described this picture best. Space. Galactic. What do you think this picture is called? Uh, <laughs> data crawling. Uh, um... Reflection of the universe. Noted. Take a look at this one. What motion feels represents this picture? Numbness, I guess. What would you feel is best descri describes this picture best? Heavenly? Looks almost like a gateway. Let's look at that. What do you feel this picture is called? Um... The light at the end of the tunnel. That's peculiar. And how about this one? Motion do you feel is represented in this picture? We'll put this in chaos. Where do you feel is described this picture best? Darkness. I think this picture is called. Best darkness, I guess. I don't know. And this here. What should you feel is represented in this picture? Oh, anger. I feel describes this picture best. Um. I feel I feel judged looking at this. Um, veiled. Eye of Chaos, I guess. Now this one? Feels represented in this picture. Or do you feel it's described this picture best? How about this? Oh, this is anger. Fury. I think this picture is called Rage Incarnate. Interesting that you say that. How about this one? Oh. How do you feel most represents, or what emotion do you feel is most present in this picture? Paranoia. Um, depression, I guess, maybe. God, I feel like I'm being watched. Monitoring, there you go. Picture is called. <laughs> Data sphere, thought provoked. Vector. I guess Matrix Watcher, if any of them. Now this one. Again, this is another anger picture. I guess I could see birth. Sure. Just call. Monolith heart. I like that one. Hey, look at this. What emotion do you feel is best present in this picture? Mm -hmm. Describe this picture best. Um, broken. Broken definitely looks about right for this one. Picture called. Uh, the crystal verse. I guess. We're almost done. Oof, um... Vishkus. I think this picture is called... The Sludge, I like that. The Jowls of Death, though, that's... 
that sounds about right. Let's see here. What motion do you feel if that's present in this picture? This? I could actually be seeing joy. Let me describe this picture best. Sunlight. I think this picture's called. Uh, Red Angel. Alright then. Just a few more. What do you feel is the best in this picture? Numbness. <laughs> the sun is a deadly laser. What do you feel describes this picture best? Um. Oh, yeah, cosmic, actually. I think this picture is called. Formless Being. Almost finished. Come on. What embodiment do you feel is best presented in this picture? Depression. Do you feel describes this picture best? Warped. Picture's called, um... Oh, these look like the final boss of an RPG Maker game. Yeah. Last one. Okay. Um, hmm. I think that about wraps it up. Your answers have been documented well. Deep into your subconscious, they dwell. But I'm not finished with you just yet. There are still some truths that have yet to be met. As a matter of fact, this is only the start. We will have a great deal of fun before we part. So let me challenge you on another level still. I will pick your brain till I get my fill. This next set of questions will test your sub or will test your conscious more. And again, your honesty I do implore. Let us begin. One year, you're running a little low on funds to purchase presents around the holiday, so you decide to spend one dollar and get everyone in your family a lottery ticket. You give each of them their own lottery ticket and wish them the best of luck. The drawings help, and one of your family members hits the jackpot, but it's someone who you don't really get along with and just bought a present out of moral obligation. They plan to keep the money for themselves, as they feel like it was their ticket. How does that make you feel? Indifferent. It's just the way life goes sometimes. Very well. What would do you, or what, and what would you wish to do in this situation? Let them be happy with their winnings. If the rules were reversed and you were giving a winning lottery ticket, would you share the money with your least favorite family member who bought you the ticket in the first place? Probably not. I see. Now you're walking through a forest and you come across a black suitcase. Inside the case there rests one million dollars. Alongside the money there lies a bloodstained note with only one word written on it. The note simply says, don't. How does that make you feel? Scared? There's blood in there? What do you wish to do in this situation? Um... Call the police and let them know about the suitcase? If the note wasn't covered in blood, would it change your decision at all? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Interesting. The devil appears in your room at night, while you're alone, just about to fall asleep, and tells you that he has a special one-time offer for you. In exchange for your soul and eternal damnation, he will let you choose from one of three glorious bargains. He has not told you what those bargains are yet. How does that make you feel? Suspicious? I don't think the devil truly exists. The devil then goes on to assure you that whether or not you believe him to be truly the devil, he surely is. And to prove his point, he demonstrates a magnificent magical prowess and drives you to hell for a split second before transporting you back to your room. In that second, you can feel a lifetime of pain and suffering in the most unimaginable ways possible. He then goes on to tell you that one of his offers in exchange for your soul is to see if you can strike a bargain. Which would you choose in exchange for your soul, if any of I'll insult myself. If the devil offered you a deal of some other kind, would you accept it in exchange for internal damnation? No. 
probably going there anyway. But, no. I see. Civilization is about to come to an end as a plague sweeps the globe, turning everyone who perishes into mindless zombies who hunger for living flesh. He watches everyone you know becomes gravely ill and, tur and turns, except for your five of your closest friends and family. How does that make you feel? I don't know if I can survive for long. You knew that a zombie apocalypse was coming in ten years from now. You could prevent it from happening. Would you? I would try. Interesting. You've been working at a company for ten years, and you've been promised a very important and incredibly lucrative promotion. However, someone hired only a number of weeks ago has just been promoted to the position that you were promised. Your boss essentially tells you tough luck and that maybe one day you'll get the position and yet promote the other employee as a favor for a friend. How does this make you feel? <sighs> Indifferent. You also learned a few secrets about the company that could be disastrous if they were to escape, such as the fact that they haven't been properly reporting their income for the last decade. What would you wish to do in this situation? Nothing. You win some, you lose some. If the rules were reversed and you were hired and promoted as favor over someone more deserving, would you accept the position? You're home alone at night, cooking your food in the kitchen, turn around and realize that someone is watching you through your window in the darkness. They have their face and hands pressed up against the window and they make direct eye contact with you before turning and running out of sight around the other side of the house. How does that make you feel? Anxious. What do you think you'd do in this situation? Um, lock the doors and call the police? If the face you saw in the window was the face of a supernatural entity and not a human being, would your answer change at all? Well, yeah, I wouldn't call the police. At that point, I'd grab a fucking weapon. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to prevent you with some more potential scenarios, but I'm going to ask for more simplistic answers as a result. There you go. You're not feeling all too well, so you decide to go to the doctor. The doctor runs a series of tests and gets back to you shortly after to announce some great news. It turns out that you've contracted an incredibly rare illness that there is currently no cure for. This illness causes complete body paralysis within six months of contraction, meaning that in less than half a year from now, you'll be rendered unable to move, blink, talk, or any form of expression whatsoever. You will need to be kept alive on a feeding tube, and you'll never be able to communicate with anyone else ever again. Just be kept alive on machines in a veg vegetative state. Would you want to be kept alive in that state, or would you rather do the plug pull to see what happens? Pull the plug. How would you like to spend the last months, uh, six months of your life while still mo uh, mobile? There are diseases out there that can put you in some unfortunate situation. Does this motivate you to do things you've never done before, pursue more life? Or do you feel relatively unaffected by the knowledge that this could potentially happen at you at any point in time? It doesn't really change anything for me. I kind of already knew. Noted. You have a pet dog with whom you've raised since birth. Three years has passed and it's the best dog you've ever had. You loved it like your own child and one day he runs away in the middle of the night, chasing after a wild animal in the darkness. You search everywhere for your dog, but no matter what you do, you can't seem to make any progress. About a month passes, and you still haven't seen a trace of your four-legged friend, until one morning you awaken to the sound of a familiar barking. You rush outside and find that your elderly neighbor in his late 80s is out in his front lawn, joyously playing with your dog. He's named the beast Johnny, and him and your dog seem to be having the time of their life. You rush over there and hug the dog, and he excitedly licks your face. Your neighbor says Johnny is a good boy, isn't he? Well, also, when I was just a boy about your age, but he's come back. Johnny has come back, and we're together again. Come to find out, your elderly neighbor is suffering from dementia, recently brought on by the stress and heartache of losing his wife just a couple months prior to finding your dog. This dementia has caused him to believe that your dog, Johnny, is his old dog from his childhood coming back to his life to make him happy and keep him company. The dog seems to be in great shape, very happy, and well looked after, and you know that telling the old man that this isn't really his dog and that your dog would break his heart and crush him. Would you break the news to him that this isn't his dog and take Johnny home with you? 
Will you let him keep the dog and choose to visit him daily and go play for our walks? I mean, I'd visit him daily and go for walks. Sure. Let him have the dog. No, first and foremost, Psychotic Sonic, don't tell me what to do. Like, I, th these are my answers. I'm kind of getting a little tired of seeing that pop up, uh, seeing answers pop up in, in chat. If you guys want to play this, there are only like two, bu two bucks on Steam a pop. So, <laughs> please don't try to influence my, my, my answers. Does this story make you sad at all? Well, fucking yes. Can you imagine yourself in the old man's position, being so alone in life and finding one thing that makes you feel less alone and potentially having to face it being ripped away from you once again? Nah. Can't. Next question. Let's say that you were viciously murdered by a serial killer and you fell for one of their traps as they lured you in and made you their latest victim. Let's also say that you're giving you a unique opportunity in the afterlife as you return as a spirit to roam the earth. However, you're bound to two potential options, and only two. Okay. Give me a sec. <sighs> Alright. You now go choose to haunt your assailant and make his life miserable, hoping to foil his plans to kill in the future and potentially to save lives in the process. Or you can choose to spend your time as a spirit amongst your still living family and friends, guiding them in positive ways and making their lives better. You are bound to whichever option you choose until either your family or friends are no longer living, or your killer is no longer living. Not choose both. Which one would you choose? <sighs> well, my friends are all over the place. I'd probably choose to haunt my killer. Do you think you have what it takes inside your killer to drive your killer insane and push him over the edge? No. Do you believe that this scenario is possible? No. If this situation happened to a friend or family member and they were viciously killed, what situation would you rather them choose? Hmm. Next question. One night you go to sleep and get a good rest that feels like the best sleep you've ever had. You wake up in an unfamiliar room, in an unfamiliar bed. Look in the mirror and you hardly recognize yourself. You look as though you've aged 20 years. There's a sticky note on the television screen that says please play, so you oblige the note and hit the play button to reveal the message that has been left for you by your friends and family that are still alive and well, though they all seem to be 20 years older as well. They explain to you that every single day for the last 20 years, you've repeated the same day over and over again. Due to a severe head injury, your memory has, doesn't last more than 24 hours. So each day when you sleep, all recollection of what took place 24 hours prior is wiped entirely. Loved ones have made a video for you to let you have your say in your potential future. You have the option of either watching this video every single day so you know what's going on, and can continue to progress in your life, even though you won't have any recollection of it. You can continue living, living as you've been, repeating the same day over and over again, living in ignorant bliss. Which would you choose to do? Watch the video. Would you be upset if your family kept the truth from you for 20 years, even though they felt like it was for your own good? No. I couldn't be. I wouldn't fucking remember. If your best friend was in this situation, would you make a video for them telling them the truth, or would you repeat every day exactly the same for them in order to keep them happy, never letting them know the truth? I'd make a video. I'll take note of your answer. You come to find through frantic digging in the attic and reading old files and newspapers that your parents are framed, are, are famed psychologists. You also come to find out that they aren't really your parents. In fact, they're not even related to you at all. From what you can gather through your new discoveries, the story tells of a young child who developed psychotic tendencies and went into a trance before murdering their parents in a tragically brutal way. However, that child su suffered so much trauma from the event and the loss of their parents, once that the trance had worn off and they repressed the memory of their parents' deaths, blocking it completely from their mind. Two psychologists took the child into treatment and performed studies against the child's knowledge, raising that child to be a fully functional adult, while playing the role of a child's real life parent or real parents to further gather data and potentially help that child avoid a terrible life in the process. You are that child. Would you resent your parents? No. Would you be grateful that they gave you a second chance at life? Yes. Would you feel betrayed by your parents? No. Would you confront the, uh, your parents about the articles you found? Probably. 
you were in your parents' position, would you do the same for, for a child in a similar situation? I mean, I don't really like kids, but... I guess? Interesting. I have one final scenario for you before we move on. The end of the world has come and gone, and all that's left are post-apocalyptic soldiers roaming in the lands, combing through towns and laying waste to any survivors in their paths in hopes of sending their equipment to themselves in order to survive the sparse barren wasteland known as planet Earth. You get in good with a large colony of soldiers and spend about six months with them before they decide that you're not pulling your weight in order to save the very few food rations they have left, they exile you from the compound and send you out to fend for yourself. You decide to venture into the neighboring town in hopes of finding food that was left behind by raiders, and it only takes you about a day and a half before you strike gold. A hidden underground bunker stockpile to the room with enough food to feed the entire colony for a year. Now, you have a few choices to make. Would you go back to the colony and tell them about the bunker, or would you stay in the bunker all by yourself? Just keep the bunker. They exiled me. Fuck off. If you could choose to only tell some of the soldiers about the bunker and let them in so you could lead a new colony, but exile the soldiers who exiled you, would you do it? Ooh, now that is... You know what? That's good revenge. I like that. I like the way you think. If you were to lead a new colony, would you build it based on savagery or ra and raiding, or would you build it based on sharing and compassion? A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Um, probably sharing and compassion though, I guess. If you were the leader of the colony that exiled you, except it was you who exiled, someone else pull wasn't pulling their weight. That person just so happened to find themselves in a similar situation where they found a jackpot worth of food in an underground bunker, but they refused to share with you in the colony. Would you raid them and steal it for yourselves, or would you let them keep what they found? They can keep what they found. We f we fucked up. So, shrug us. Very interesting. Well, that wraps up this portion of the test. But I need more from you before I allow you to rest. A choice here, a choice there. Which would you rather? Moral dilemmas are bound from what I can gather. You will answer clearly, crisp and concise. Will you be selfish, or is your conscience a vice? Just mere moments from now, we both shall see the difference between who you are and who you wish to be. Let us begin. Would you rather abandon the person you love most, or be abandoned by the person you love the most? <sighs> be abandoned, I guess. I've dealt with that enough times. Would you rather have friends in high places who could get you anything you wanted but didn't necessarily care about you, or friends who couldn't give you anything but feel like a deep personal bond with you? Friends with a stronger bond, obviously. Would you rather find 10,000 to get, keep it for yourself, or find 20,000 but have to split it four ways with your closest friends and family? I do like the idea of, of 10,000 for myself. Because this would only leave me with 5,000. 5,000 is also pretty good. I could definitely do with, uh, quite a bit with that. 10,000 to myself. What would I do with $10,000? It's a life-changing amount of money. At least for me, that's a life-changing amount of money. Like, if you get that all at once... Sure thought. With, with 10,000? Did people make 10,000 in a year? Pretty, pretty fine. But for me, that would be a life-changing amount of money. 5,000 would also be pretty good, though. I could do a lot with, with, with 5,000. Huh. I can do a lot with both. You could do more with 10,000. Trying to figure out though what I would do with 10,000. I don't think you can buy a house with 10,000. I think that... I don't think the, the Colorado economy is that... Is that generous? Hmm. No, I wouldn't do that. I'd probably
probably keep the 10,000 for myself. Would you rather cheat on your partner but never get caught? Or know that your partner cheated on you but had no way of proving it? Get cheated on with no evidence. Would you rather get rich through illegal means or be poor but live an honest life? It's kind of where I'm living right now. It's not the best life, but eh. Would you rather press a button that would kill your favorite friend or press a button that would kill your entire or your favorite family member? Pet. Would you rather get fired from a high paying job or have to fire your friends from a high paying job? Get fired. Would you rather sleep with your si uh, step sibling or sleep with your best friend's partner? Well, it doesn't say. It just says sleep with. It doesn't necessarily say sexually, so. Would you rather save your best friend from certain death and let a thousand strangers die? Or save a thousand s strangers and let your best friend die? Would you rather get free food for the rest of your life or rescue a starving child from a third world country? Couldn't I, theoretically, just get free food for the rest of my life and then give that to a starving child? Like, the food's free. Like, this would you rather actually doesn't really have any downside to that. Because, like, yeah, theoretically you could just give it to... Like, if you had free food for the rest of your life, you could just give that food to the, to those that are hungry. I found a loophole. Free food. Would you rather be rich with a, uh, but without family or poor but with family? Again, I want to put out there that I don't hate my family. But I'd have probably answer that. Would you rather have to steal food for the rest of your life in order to eat or steal an enormous amount of money but from, uh, from the wealthy but have to destroy the money immediately after? Well, what would be the point in stealing the money? Steal food for the rest of your life. Would you rather serve four years in the military during the wartime or move to a third world country and never be allowed to return home? Serve four years in the military during the wartime, I guess. I don't have to be on the front lines. I just have to serve in a war. I'd hate that, but, you know, I'd get a veteran's discount, I guess. Would you rather always be traveling 10 miles above the speed limit or 10 miles per hour below the speed limit? Uh, below the speed limit. Above can get me in trouble. Would you rather n never have sex for the remainder of your life or have sex every day in order to stay alive? Hi, I'm Ace. Never have sex again. Thank you. Would you rather be addicted to hardcore drugs for 10 years but make a full recovery, or be addicted to alcohol for the rest of your life? Hmm. I guess alcoholic. Well, I mean, neither are particularly great. Like, neither would be one that I would typically, or particularly like, but if I had to choose one, I guess I'd rather be an alcoholic. Would you rather live to be 200 years old in a perfectly preserved, youthful body, and have to watch your friends and family die around you, or live to be 70 but die before your friends and family? Die before my loved ones. Would you rather sacrifice all your friends in order to survive, or sacrifice both of your parents? Would you rather get acknowledged for the work that you didn't do, or work hard for the rest of your life but not receive any praise for it? Would you rather punch a nun or get punched by a nun? Would you rather lose all the money that you've earned this year or lose all of the memories you've gained this year? Probably 
probably the memories, because and so far there hasn't really been anything really big to happen this year. For me, at least. It's not like I'm going to make any particularly, like, um, I guess, like, really big memories, like, very important memories. So I'd probably lose all the memories I've gained this year. I have a hard time remembering what I did last year anyway. Would you rather flip a coin for a chance to win $20 or immediately win 10 Keep a guaranteed 10 Would you rather know how you die or know when you'll die? Neither, actually. I don't think I want to know how or when I would die. Um... I guess I know, I'd rather know when. If I had to. I'd rather be blind but be able to see crystal clear underwater or be deaf, deaf always. Um. Theoretically, couldn't I just wear, like, goggles that are filled with water? Theoretically, couldn't I just do that? Can I just fill goggles with water and just wear that? It'd just be weird glasses. Would you really give up all internet and social media but be able to travel the world for free, but ha uh, or have the best internet in the world but never leave your house? You're already kind of do the latter. Would you rather walk barefoot across a bed of hot coals, or walk barefoot through a pitch black snake infested corridor? Hot coals. Would you rather be the judge who sentences people to death, or the executioner in charge of killing them? Would you be able to see past the water dome? Well, it says see crystal clear underwater. So, water is transparent. So yes, you would have to be able to have, like, that'd have to be the thing. Anyway, uh, I guess it'd be the, the executioner. Would you rather have a witch cast a nasty hex on you so that you'll always have bad luck, or be haunted by a demon intent on possessing you? Uh, haunted by a demon seeking possession. Would you rather be married to someone incredibly beautiful who doesn't find you attractive, or be married to someone whom you're not even remotely attracted to but they find you incredibly attractive? Attractive. Ugh, I mean, neither are particularly amazing. Um. But I guess someone who. I guess someone who I'm not attracted to. I guess? As I said, neither are particularly great. It's literally... It's... it's literally the same thing, it's just which position would I want to be in. Do you rather work in a high-paying job that you despise or a low-paying job that you love? I mean, I'm already doing the latter. Would you rather walk one mile home wearing nothing but a pair of socks or be fully clothed but have to walk a hundred miles to get home? Um... Well, that's indecent, so... hundred miles. Would you rather find five dollars in your pocket or have to grab a hundred pot... a hundred dollars out of a public toilet? I can wash the money. Fun fact, um, American money is not made of paper, it is made of a cloth. So, as indecent as it is, you can wash the money. Would you rather have a hundred of your favorite books but never watch a movie again, or have a hundred of your favorite movies but never read a book again? I mean, I already 
don't do a lot of reading nowadays. I also don't do a lot of movie watching nowadays. I, I mean, I, I watch movies at least once a month. Uh, I guess I give up books. I guess. Would you rather always be 20 minutes late to everything or 2 hours early to everything? I like being punctual. Would you rather find a dead body or be a witness for deadly assault? I'd rather find a dead body. Would you rather be able to change your past or see what the future holds for you? Change my past. Would you rather have one really great friend or a hundred mediocre friends? I mean, I already have a lot of friends, as is, but I don't... I, I, I guess the one great friend? Because that's kind of how it was... for most of my life, I guess. Would you rather lose all your teeth, or you lose one day off your life every time you kiss someone? I mean, I don't kiss anyone, so that's an easy answer. Would you rather win the lottery or lose and lose the ticket before you can collect your money, or see all your worst enemies uh, win the lottery? I mean... <sighs> I'd rather win the lottery and lose my ticket. Would you rather find true love or have your dream job? I mean... Dream job, I guess. Would you rather have a pause button for life or a rewind button? <laughs> rewind button. Would you rather down, uh, drown to death in gasoline or be boiled to death in water? Ooh. Neither are particularly great. Um. I guess gasoline would be quicker. Would you rather make a new friend every day or get a hundred dollars a day doing nothing but never having friends again? Um... New friend, I guess. Would you rather die to save your family or sacrifice your family to save yourself? Would you rather always be hated by those closest to you or something, or for something you didn't do or have hurt everyone you care about but they'll never find out it was you? I mean, I've already, I've already felt this one. I'd be much more better prepared for this one. Um. So. Would you rather sleep with your worst enemy or sleep with someone who you know has many incurable STDs? Um. Again, doesn't have to be sexually. But, bleh. Would you rather only eat food you don't like or give up all liquids except for water? I'm a soda addict. I don't think I'd be able to only eat food that I don't like. Would you rather always listen to music at max volume, or always listen to music just above the lowest volume? I actually already do this. As is. Would you rather meet your hero and find out that they don't like you, or never meet your hero at all? Never. I mean, I don't have a hero to begin with, but even if I did, I would never want to meet them. Would you rather never have a pet for the rest of your life, or never have friends for the rest of your life? Never have pets. Would you rather live in excruciating pain for the rest of your life, or live pain-free but everyone you know and love will live in excruciating pain for the rest of their lives? Thank you for answering my questions, but we are not yet done. For we have made it through many categories, except for one. These final questions will be from deep within. I want to see your soul. I want to see your heart be quickened. I want to learn all that you know. I want to see what makes you think. I want to know what makes you tick. 
I want to know your darkest truths. I want to know what makes you sick. I want to expel the truth from yourself. I want to feed on your precious faith. I want to learn all of your love and faith and all your hate. So one last time we sit together as we await the final revelation. These are the final questions I have the last examination. Take your time. Do think hard. Savor every moment dearly. For when I am finally finished with you, you will see it ever so clearly. And here we go. Choose one of these words that you feel resonates with you most at this very moment. Oh, that's a that's a two dollar word. Hold on, let me look up that one. Huh. Okay. Um. Choose one of these words that you feel resonates with you at this very moment. Um. Interesting. Do you ever lie to those who are closest to you? Uh, no. Have you ever hurt someone whom you didn't, or who you know didn't deserve it? Yeah. Have you ever lost your temper when you know you shouldn't have? Yes, absolutely. Have you ever intentionally hurt an animal? No. Have you ever blamed someone for something that you know they didn't do? Yes. Have you ever abandoned a pet? No. Have you ever abandoned a loved one in their time of need? Have I? No. Have you ever stolen something from someone that you cared about? No. Can't think of anything. Have you ever broken something to spite someone that you cared about? No. Have you ever played with, uh, played the victim in a situation even though you hadn't been wronged? No. A lot of people would say that I have, but I genuinely don't think I have. Like, I... Uh, it's like, it, the, the, the question kind of entails, it's like, oh, have you, have you ever thought you weren't wrong, but you still played the victim? To which, no. I've been very honest with, with how I feel about the situations that I have been in. Even if you don't think the, that it's necessarily true, it is how I feel. So, no, I've never played the victim. Have you ever had romantic feelings for someone who wasn't your partner while you were in a relationship? No. Have you ever wished for the death of someone who had wronged you? Yes. Have you ever wished for the death of a loved one? You knew that writing someone's name on a piece of paper could instantly cause the death. Would you write down anyone's name? <sighs> yeah. Do you feel like you would spend more time with your loved ones than you currently do? Probably. Have you ever owed someone an apology but refused to apologize to them? Yes. Do you ever regret worrying too much about the things you can't control? Yes. Do you ever feel like your negativity brings other people down? Uh, how do I say yes like five times over? Do you ever regret not standing up for yourself when you feel like you've been wronged? Yes. Do you ever feel like you let others influence your decision making too much? Yeah. Do you ever wish that you lived a more honest life? Um, yeah. I mean... I try to be as honest as I can, but, you know, sometimes I feel like I could wish more honesty. Has your dishonesty ever caused someone else to suffer? Yeah. Have you ever had someone leave your life before you had a chance to tell them something important? Yeah. Do you ever feel like you prioritize people in your life that are unworthy of your time? Yes. Do you ever feel like you prioritize your own wants before those who need you the most? No. Do you ever feel like you spent too much time working towards something that you're not truly passionate about? Yes. Do you ever feel like you're living up to your full potential? Not at all. Do you ever let your feel st fear stop you from pursuing things that you truly want? Yes. Did you ever refuse to try something because you were afraid you would fail? Yes. Have you ever been attracted to someone but refused to let them know because you were afraid of being rejected? 
No, I eventually let them know. Do you ever feel as though you were chasing the wrong things in life? Yes. Do you ever feel like you spend so much time planning for the future yet ignore the presence? Uh, no, I actually don't really plan for the future. Do you feel like your friends and family like you more than you like them? No, I actually feel the other way around. Have you ever loved a pet more than your family? Um, no. Do you ever make up excuses to get out of going to an event instead of just telling the person who invited you that you just don't want to go? No, I've never done that. Do you ever just feel like you spend more time with technology than you do building strong bonds and relations er, with friends and family? Well, yes, but also my friends are online. I don't really have any friends offline. Um, I did at one point, but all of them have since moved away or have like disappeared and shit like that. So. Um, no, but yes, but no, I'm not trying to answer this one, actually. I'll say yes. Just because, again, I don't have, like, any, I don't really, like, spend time with my family at all. Have you ever defended someone that you shouldn't have? Yes. You sometimes have a hard time admitting when you're wrong. I mean... Yeah... But also, no. Like, I'll eventually get to that point. But... In the, in the moment, yes. So yeah, sometimes I do. You ever place the blame for your personal failures on someone or something else? No. Have you ever accused someone of, of something with no real evidence to back it up? No. Have you ever had sex with someone whom you know you shouldn't have? No, I've never had sex. Have you ever had any kind of relationship with someone who you know you shouldn't have? No, I've never been in a relationship. Have you ever let a relationship degrade, uh, degrade because you're afraid of being the one to break up with someone? No, I've never been in a relationship. Do you ever feel like you could take better care of your own health? Oh, yes. Have you ever let someone else take the blame for something that you did? Have I? No. Have you ever acquired something that you didn't really want because you, uh, someone else wanted it? No. Do you ever feel like you're not living up to others' expectations? Yes. I have straight up been called a disappointment by my mother. Have you ever walked out of someone's life without any explanation? Probably? I'll say yeah. Do you ever feel like you focus more on the negative aspects of your life than what you don't have rather than being grateful for what you do have? Probably. Have you ever witnessed someone being wrong but didn't have the courage to stand up for them? Yes. And finally, do you feel like you're a good person? No. Very interesting. That concludes the ending of your examination. In your mind, I have dug myself a hole. I will analyze your answers carefully, and now it's time for me to gaze into your soul. Alright. This is preposterous. This simply cannot be. I've expected every potential outcome, but yours seems to have evaded even me. I was prepared to tell you of your fate, to play upon your fear. To break the worst news, uh, worst of news to you, to plant seeds of doubt within your ear. But as I've asked you to be honest with me, I must in turn be as honest with you. For as much as I wish to lie, I am forever shackled to the truth. From what I can deduct with deep within from everything you've shared with me, in return I shall share this with you. This is what I see. You are not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And that fact alone is what you, makes you so incredibly special. Your scars are reminders of what didn't kill you. Your mistakes are who you are, who you were. The lessons learned are what you needed to be when you knew you could be all along. Forgive, your, forgive yourself for the mistakes of the past. The people you felt you shouldn't have, or should have paid more attention to. The people you felt you shouldn't have given more of a chance. The people you felt you didn't, 
you didn't treat the best. You are not the person you used to be. You don't have to be that person again. Every single second of every single day is an opportunity to change and be the person we wish to be. God damn it! <laughs> One piece of advice I must offer to you is that your time is not infinite, and your opportunities aren't either. You may not be able to change the past, but you can absolutely change the present. <laughs> that one hits. If only you believed in yourself as much as I believe in you, if only you could see what I see, never doubt yourself ever again. Keep at it, make the changes, and flourish. Your secret word is appreciate. Remember this word, this will come in handy. <laughs> I'm tearing up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> that one plucked a, uh, particular string. If you received an entirely new outcome, then that means you've got multiple layers of your things to work on in your journey. Or you may just have an extra layer of depth to your personality, but only you will know the answer to that. You've answered hundreds of questions, you've found deeper meanings, you've been enlightened, and you've helped others find enlightenment. Many people have wondered just what the test series is truly about. But it's simple. The answers are always so much more simple than we even believe them to be. The test is about... Reflection in your darkened screen, the ones who seek the answers, the person who seeks answers. More than being about the answers, the test is more so about the questions. It's about making you think. It's about encouraging you to open up and admit that you're human. Just as human as everyone else. And the test is about unity. The test is about compassion. The test is about bringing people together and showing the world that we're not so different after all. Look at the screen, or look at the, all of the secret words that have been left in the comments. Look at all of the thousand people who are just like you. We all feel so lonely sometimes. We all feel flawed. We all feel pain. That's because every single one of us is human. The world judges one another based on so many variables, but they're the most hypocritical set of valuables, or variables imaginable. We judge each other, and are judged ourselves by our peers who do the same exact shit that they judge us for in the end. That's, and that we judge them for too. You feel flawed, because you are flawed. You feel afraid, because you have the right to be. You feel overwhelmed because the world is overwhelming. Depression is overwhelming. Anxiety is overwhelming. The problems are overwhelming. Suicide is an epidemic. We're living, losing loved ones before their time, and any one of us can fall on the hardest times in our lives at any given moment. We can lose everything we know and love instantly and unexpectedly. But the one thing we were not, or we are not, is alone. You are never alone. We're all flawed, because we're all human. We're all scared, because we're all human. We all fight these battles every single day, because we're all human. But you never have to feel alone in your fight. A 
Look at all of the secret words that have been gathered that match yours. Look at all the words that don't match yours. Perhaps those people are going through the struggles that you have yet to experience or know nothing about. And perhaps some others know not of yours either. But don't judge those who are struggling. Help them, just as you would wish to be helped in your time of need. Don't be afraid to ask for help and reach out for those who are. Everyone is suffering. Some of us just suffer quieter than others. We're all into this together. The test series has helped bring so many people together and make so many people feel less alone. We've read your comments, and others are free to do so as well. We've read about how these games have helped you. We've read about how much positivity they've spread. We've read about how many people say that their lives are forever changed, and I'll tell you one thing. Even if one life was saved in the process of the social experiment, then it was worth conducting, and every single one of you that left a comment is a hero. By leaving comments, you help spread the message out to others. You help spread a positive light in a very dark time for so many people, and those people have you to thank for it. There are so many people in this world who do nothing for others, and they'll continue to do nothing for others. They won't lift a finger to help others around them because they don't understand that someone is suffering just as much as they are. They're just too afraid to open up about it. But not us. We've all opened up quite a lot, haven't we? We were brave enough to answer these questions that so many people fear admitting to. We were brave enough to take a chance and leave a secret word as a symbol of our participation. And for that, Random Studios would like to thank you for not only for placing your name in the credits at the end of this game so the world knows of your good deeds and spreading the word and participating, but we've also got another surprise for you. Everyone who's left a comment on our titles and continues to do so in future titles will be put in the credits of our new massive project that we've been working on, but that's not the good part. We will also be going through and selecting names for those who leave comments on our titles and putting their names right in the actual game and storyline, whether it be a special item, place of the lore, or a character named after them and much more. You've contributed your time and energy to help uh, and helped others in need. We want to make sure that you're commemorated for your efforts and get the admiration you deserve. As far as your secret words go, your secret words will play a pivotal role in our new project. You'll plug your secret words into different parts of your journey when they are requested of you, and they will alter the game in a way uniquely set for your specific words. This is an RPG where every choice matters, where every decision you make changes about uh, something in your session. This is an RPG that focuses on every human emotion and the decisions we made and the help those decisions make us feel. <laughs> keep an eye out for the future of our main project. Go away, Java. Uh, keep an eye out for uh, in the future for our main project, Chasing Demons, where every NPC from all of our titles will be represented with the storyline, and the world will see how they all tie in together. You helped shape it. You helped make it what it is. And we'll be sure to continue to add more and more players into the lore and gameplay as we read more and more comments left on our titles all the way up until its official release. And again, to commemorate those who participated all across our titles, we will be periodically selecting names from all of our titles. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us, and everything you continue to do for the world. We greatly appreciate your feedback and support. We've read every single review and comment that you left for us. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for everything you do, thank you for playing, and thank you for contributing your secret words to our projects. Word from the developers. If any of these games even save one life, then it was all worth it. That means you're a part of that. You're a part of saving someone's life. Most people will live their entire lives never having done something special like that. Even if you didn't particularly find anything useful yourself from the test series, just by you spreading the word, you've helped others who do find something beneficial from the series who really could use the help in the time of need, as shown in the plethora of positive and inspirational comments left on the series as a whole. So thank you for spreading the word and helping so many people who truly, truly need it. Some will go their entire lives living selfishly, never lifting a finger to help someone unless it personally benefits themselves. I'm sure you've met some people like that in your lifetime, and that's okay. There's a place for all types of people in the world. We need people like that to create balance. We need selfish with the selfless. We need the good with the bad. We need happiness with the sadness. We need it all in order to, uh, to appreciate what we have and what we don't have. But these games have helped people, and that means you've helped people. You left a comment, you were part of this. If you continue to leave comments, you continue to be a part of this. If you shared this, you helped someone. If you don't believe me, take a look for yourself and read some of the words people have left the rest of the world to see. To look at the joy and positivity you've helped spread throughout the world in such a dark, dark time. Where people are sick and dying. People are separated by both difference and indifference. 
The one thing we all have in common is that we're all human inside. It doesn't really matter where we come from, how we grow up, what we've been through, what our opinion and preferences are, what we enjoy, what we dislike, how we judge, and are judged. In the end, we are all human. We all feel. We all have the same thoughts and the same feelings and emotions, and each and every person living amongst us has their has their own lives. Each person is the center of their own universe. Every individual has their own family, their own friends, their own circle. They mean something to the world. They mean something to someone, even when they don't feel like it, they do. Trust me, you do. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for encouraging other people to be a part of this. Thank you for spreading something so un- or uniting in such a divisive world. Thank you for opening up your heart and your mind in order to create acceptance, not only for everyone else, but for yourself as well. Even in our differences, we aren't so different after all, and we're in this world together. Let's make it a happy state for everyone. We'd also like to give a very special shout out to Markiplier and his community for supporting us through our other titles. So, I don't have to really read this part, but... God, that last one hit. <laughs> it's like being told that I I put extra time into people who don't deserve it. That's one thing. Being told that what was the second result that I got? It was deserving, but like what was what was the outcome that they came to? too hard on myself, I guess. The side note to anyone and everyone who's taken the time to be here, we've also developed a game called The Testing Chamber, which can be considered connected to a test trilogy in a very special way, so feel free to check out that if you think it's quite a unique experience. If you enjoyed what the test trilogy had to offer, then we truly believe that you'll love the playstyle of The Testing Chamber, as it takes everything that its predecessors offered and amplifies the experience to an unprecedented degree. I genuinely hope you give the testing chamber a chance as we spend countless of hours passion development making it what it is and we hope that after playing it that it means much to you as it does to us. In the meantime, we'd like to recommend our title called The Advisor to You. We feel that it provides a great opportunity for player developer interaction and allows players to cast their vote on where the story should head. It's a choices matter style of game that's never been done before as you, the player, are responsible for how the story is written in future episodes. Thank you for listening to us pour our hearts out about our passion projects. We put a lot of time and effort to what we built. We just want the same thing that everyone else wants in life. A chance. With that being said, keep a hold of your secret words. You're going to need them for when you're chasing demons. Okay. I will peel the truth from your flesh like petals from a blackened rose. She loves me? Don't do this. She loves me not. She loves me. Please, I beg of you. She loves me not. Never love a monster like you. So let her choice take its toll. And in herself, may she rot. Yeah, we'll do the testing chamber some other time. Um, as well as some of these other games. Might as well. But, I've already started crying this stream. I think it's a good place to end it for now. We've also been going for two and a half minutes, or two and a half hours. God, I almost said two and a half minutes. We've been going for like two and a half hours, so 